so much. Okay. Very good, huh? Today we are. You watch me. Oh, I'll watch you. Oh, okay. Good afternoon, Mrs. Brickman. The African American Museum Library Coalition is very pleased to record your life for posterity so that the history of your works can be appreciated for generations to come. Your life story goes back to Pennsylvania. You were born in Oswego, Pennsylvania, January 28, 1902. Could you tell us about your years when you were a little girl growing up and your father and your mother? Well, I think, and I think about these people every day. And I thank God every year, a little bit, not a whole lot, because he hears me. And to see that I can go ahead now, everybody's gone but me. Why was I kept here? I don't know. I don't know why I'm here. But I'm so happy that I am to see all my family and my friends, they're all here and alive and well. And that is important to me. And when you were a little girl, you started taking the piano lessons? And how old were you at that time? I don't know, let me see. But I, I was very little because my, my sister taught music. Yes. So we had music throughout the house at all times. So that's as much as I think that I could render up for you. Yes. Well, we have your son with us today, Dr. Charles Arthur Rickman, and he's going to help us with a few of the details. Uh, could you tell us a little bit about the early years uh, when your mother was growing up? Yes, mother uh, grew up in Oswego, Pennsylvania. That's where she was born. It was a tannery town, and the tannery burned down. So then, when I was about five years old, when the family moved to Olean, New York, uh, where her parents, her father especially, was a barber, town barber, and also uh, the uh, uh, choir master, and he played an E flat cornet, and he was very strict Keep about uh, people being punctual. Tell us about your father a little bit. Well, Papa was the type of person you had to be on time. He was a chorister and just a whole lot of things. But if you came to church on Thursday for rehearsal, you could get in, but don't come any later than that. You could come. But you had to be always on time. And, and I learned that from him. Yes, to be on time. On time. Yes. And then uh, in 1922, uh, I understand you got married? I guess so. Yes. I guess I was married. <laughs> yes. Dr. Arthur Earl Rickman, oh, yeah. your husband? Yeah. Yes. He was a Howard University graduate? Yes. Uh -huh. So tell us about your father, uh, Dr. Rickman. Dad uh, came from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And uh, he went to Howard uh, University School of Medicine. That's where I went. And he met mother through uh, relatives, uh, both sides of the family. They were introduced. And he fell in love with mama and decided that she was the one that he, he wanted to be with. And she decided he was the one. So, Mrs. Rickman, how many children did you have? Just one. Tell us about your years with your son growing up. Well, just one child. There's not much that you can make. If it's all one. Yes. You can't get somebody else to take its place. Right. It's just that one child. So do you have grandchildren? Do I have any grandchildren? Yes, yes, you do. Tell us about the grandchildren. You have three grandchildren. One is Michelle. Oh, yeah. Michelle Beautiful was, uh, Mama helped to raise her, as a matter of fact. She very, very, they make a very close relationship. And I have two sons by another marriage. They're uh, 29 and 26. 
for not living in this state. And their names are John? John and Zachary. Zachary. Yeah. Everybody. And then you have a home in Richmond, California? Yes. But you came to Oakland initially with your husband. Yes. And he practiced medicine in Oakland, yes. California. Mm -hmm. Then you moved to Richmond and built your own home. Yes. Uh, I understand uh, you have a lovely home. Well, I like it. Yes. So does he. Yes. We love our home. Yes. Did you want to t tell us a little bit about your husband and those years in Oakland, California, and Richmond? Well, we were so excited that we had our own home. And go out and buddy, people came from all over to greet us with our old home. Yes. They thought it was so wonderful and it was really beautiful. And the man was very famous for the work that he did. And all all of them were from Erie, Pennsylvania. Oh. They all came That's from so Erie, Pennsylvania. So it was just wonderful. It was a beautiful home uh, overlooking uh, the bay, wasn't it, Dr. Yes. Rickman? Yes, yes. Uh, and it was built by a famous architect? Yes, Paul <laughs> Williams. Uh -huh. Paul R. Williams. And a famous construction company? Uh, yes, well, Marble Bethel oh, was one of the few uh, black contractors it. in this area at that time. He built it. Yes, that's yes, true, he did. I yes. forgot that. Mrs. Rickman, I have found out that you are one of the most elegant of, and well-known uh, persons throughout the nation. And here in the Bay Area, you were instrumental in starting an, a very important group called the Lynx of California. Oh. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Oh, yes, indeed. Because we had no rights. There was no rights for anybody. So they asked me if I would start it. I said, well, I'll try it. So I was able to, it was limited. I wish, wish I had known a little bit more. I could have gotten maybe about four or five more people in it. It should be in it yes. to help. But it was just marvelous how they rallied. And finally, my husband says, I can't do all this, and you can't either. He says, go ahead and do it, and I'll help you. So I have to, no matter where I go, give him the credit. He was absolutely fabulous. Where you were from, uh, or in Philadelphia in 1946, I understand the Lynx started back uh, there? They may have, but I wasn't in it at that time. I see. Yeah, and it's all over the world. You have a national headquarters. All over the world. Yes. And nobody, there's a back. Somebody has tried sometime. I got my, got this already. Really? I don't let them do that. Yes. Because it's worthy of the best. Yes. And you have approximately 11,000 members in the United States, the Bahamas, and Germany. And your headquarters is Washington, D.C. True. Yes. Now, uh, you were appointed as the Western Area Chairman of the Third National Assembly in 1951. And then, in 1954, you were the director of the Western Area Conference, and you have chaired three conferences at the same time, Los Angeles, Sacramento, Phoenix, Arizona, Seattle, Washington. Marvelous women, just fantastic women. I have to do that for them. What did you do? How did you do it? I don't know. I had to learn to laugh. Laugh? Learn to laugh a little. If you can't, oh, I've seen it when we didn't know what to do. Get down on the floor. Get down on the floor. Get down on the floor. And as time went on, we became acquainted, was able to go ahead. And the person who was with us, she said, I'm the only one that has a college education. Is that right? Yes. yes. But she got it, uh -huh. and we had, we had a wonderful time getting acquainted. And somebody was at my house the other day. He said, well, we got like to do so and so. But she used to pick me up and drop me off for my work. And finally I said, you know something? As many times as you've taken me, I said, why didn't you smile? I said, you know when she left the room? 
she was lagging here, and she was okay. From then on, she was okay. The smile makes a difference. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Now, the purpose of the links, you have you provide services to youth, uh, educational services, the arts, cultural and intercultural, and you also have national and international trends and services. Civic. It's a very civic-minded group. Yes. Is that right? It is correct. Yes. So some of the projects you've had have been very helpful all over the world. <laughs> I understand you built a home here with a Habitat for a mother and her three children. Yes. In the, this was in the Bay Area, San Francisco. It's, it's wonderful. Yes. You gave $100,000 to the NAACP, the Legal Defense Fund, and Educational Fund, and then $1 million pledged to that organization. And then you also opened up chapters, clusters, 22 schools in South Africa. I don't really let's talk about that. I wish they keep quiet. Keep quiet, huh? Yeah. I think it was too much more work to be done here. Too much work here yeah. in America. Yeah. Is that That's right? the way I felt about it because I had also a cousin, uh, oh no, he was more than a cousin. He was there for a year, 10 years. And he said, I was so damn glad to get out of there just because it was dangerous. That's the way he felt about yes. it. And he told him, so he got his kids home. And from there on, a little bit of time, and, and got them all home. And he said, thank God for that. Yes. It's been dangerous in South Africa for many years. Well, before. it still is. Still dangerous? Yes. Well, Nelson Mandela coming out helped a little bit, hopefully. Oh, good. Yes. After being in prison. We need help. Yes. So the chapter that you founded in Los Angeles was in 1950. And then at the same time, you founded the Oakland Bay Area chapter of the Lynx Incorporated. Yeah. And that group is still growing strong today. Oh, yeah. And I understand they celebrated your birthday. And I think they're going to give me some more. I think they will, <laughs> yes. Your 100th fun. birthday, January 28th, 19, uh, no, 202. No. 1920, 1302. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. Uh, could you tell us about your mother, Dr. Brickman, when you were um, growing up, uh, or when she was growing up, a little bit about her early years? Well, she, uh, as she had mentioned, she had been taught to play the piano by her sister, who was 18 years older than she, who was uh, a little angry that Mama came along as the baby of the family. She had been the baby till then. And uh, so she immediately went out and got married to somebody that Grandpa didn't like. But uh, it turned out to be a wonderful mixture of, of, of talented people. They all have done very well. Mother, um, I, when she was growing up, worked in a tannery. She worked in a knife okay. factory and a okay. tile factory. Okay. And, okay. and also in Woolworths, where she would demonstrate uh, uh, sheet music. If a person wanted to buy music, they could hear her play it, and then she would, they would determine whether they would buy it or not from her. And she also sold candy. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Rickman, what, what did you want to say? Well, the thing that gets me, how did I get it? I don't know how I was able to get it, but the thing of it is I sort of got things together. I would put things together. And that was how I got them. They knew I was colored. I never in this world ever tried to be anything other than this what I am right now. I never did it. Mama never did it. Papa would tell him where to go because he, he was a fine looking man, just a handsome man. And he had the choir and he did other work there too. But he was busy doing things that were uprighting. And every night before I closed my eyes, I thank God for the two of them. They're wonderful. Your mother, too. Could you tell us about your mother? Mama had an accident. Somebody on 
was going away, and I don't know if she would just watch the calendar. She said, okay. But the, as soon as she got out, the person who was supposed to help had the wrong key and gave her that medicine, and so left her totally blind. There was no way to help her. Really? Really. Wow. But she never gave up. I have pictures of her at home. Beautiful woman. Yes. So that's about all I could say. Yeah. I understand she was a suffragette, Dr. Rick? Yes, she was. Yes, oh. she she um, campaigned for women's suffrage, and she was also a, uh, I uh, a midwife, and uh, she was a very special kind of person. Who people would seek advice from her. She was kind of a spiritual quality to her, and uh, she was a, a club leader too. And the, not the name of the club back there, but she was very, very active. So maybe it's genetic. Maybe that's why Mama gets her gets it from. Yes. I, I think so. Yes. And I think about the people that have lost, have gone, and I've cried over them. And first thing I know, I just ask God. I say, I don't have to do. I say, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Do what you think you have to. At all. Yes, because yes, it sounds as though your father, uh, you, you learned a lot from him. Oh, yes. And then a lot from your mother. Oh, yes. yes. And you had a sister. Yes. She she taught music. Uh -huh. And she married a brown-skinned man. Uh -huh. And he was very, very nice. He taught us kids a lot of things. Mm -hmm. How to eat, how to do a lot of things. He was just wonderful. Yeah. But that was all. But he was always so kind. Taught us how to be. Taught us how to eat. A lot of people don't know, even today don't know how to eat. Yes. Using this. Yes. But he uh, taught forks. us. Table manners. Table manners. Yes. Mm -hmm. Taught us everything. Mm -hmm. uh, your husband went into private practice here in Oakland. Is that right? Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, do you know if he worked in the hospitals or had a here in Oakland or Berkeley? I can't say too much about what. Do you know? Sure. Yes. He uh, worked uh, primarily at a Herrick Hospital. Oh, yeah, Herrick. <clears throat> he was primarily instrumental in in making Herrick uh, integrated. At uh, one time, the wards were segregated, and he convinced. Oh, now I remember. Doctor Herrick, that um, he could make more money because sometimes the white wards were were empty. So Dr. Harris says, well, you know, everybody likes to be with their own kind. Dad says, well, we don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he says, I think you can make more money if you fall up with our folks. So that's how it, how it became integrated. Oh, that was quite amazing. He was right. also instrumental in helping uh, young black doctors who were coming out here from the <laughs> East Coast, helping them to yeah. pass the... Uh, the state exams and help them to get established in practice. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we teach them things about uh, the exams, what qu key questions would be asked on the exams and things like that. So your husband worked uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Sometimes. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Especially when the babies call. were coming. On call. Yeah. Okay. Especially when babies were coming. He was right there. Yes. So while he was doing that, what were you doing at that time, uh, Mrs. Richter? Probably trying to sober up. Uh, you were painting, I, or? <laughs> no, I just, just kidding. No, just being like a normal person. Uh -huh. But you, you were very active. I think you, you had In church, always in uh -huh. church. Always in church. And with boys. I love little boys yes. as little students, and they could always come in with what was needed. And I think the thing that I liked the most, he'd come in and he'd say, well, he'd... So I said, wait a minute, now let's not do it that way. Let's have some for you. I said, God gave you you. You're the most important. I said, so you have that some for you. I said, then you can have some for maybe that you'd like to have 
other people grew. I said, and then I said, then you have it ready to send down to Africa. I said, you got it all worked out. Oh. They loved it. Yeah. They'd come just the way I said. Yeah, so they were able to share. They were able to share. Uh -huh. Now, you played the piano. You played classical yes, and classical. jazz. Jazz. And yes. And you knew Duke Ellington? <laughs> yes. He was this great fellow. Yeah. Wonderful man. Yeah. Tell us about it. Huh? Tell us a little bit about the people you knew. Well, Duke was a kind of a guy. As soon as he get to town, he would go <coughs> get in touch with him right away. Isn't that right? Get in touch with Dad. Dad and your Dad. Uh -huh. He got in touch with him. Uh -huh. And we had a dinner party for them. Oh. Yeah, but they were just uh -huh. one of us. And Lena Horn? Lena, I never got a chance. And she's here in the city, and I could get with her. I might take the trouble to get with her, because I should, but I haven't yet. But I might have one of these days, because she's a very smart girl. Oh, yes. Yeah. And uh, let's see, U.B. Blake. Did U.B. You, Blake? Did you? Oh, yes. Knew him quite well. Yes. And who else? Fletcher Henderson. Fletcher Henderson. Fletcher. Fletcher. All those guys. Oh. Uh, but you see, I couldn't pass. Yes. I had to be black. Yes. But I never did anything about it. I was myself. Yes. I was able to do. Did you play with in, in piano in any of those groups? Oh, a little bit, yeah. Uh -huh. And they they had more fun. Uh -huh. Making love of me. I, was, I guess they thought they were <laughs> making fun of me. But they didn't. Ever show it. Uh, at the Oakland Auditorium, I understand you played, you yeah. gave a concert there? Yes. Tell us about it. Five, I think it five chapters. Five chapters I had for that. And the funny thing, people say, well, what, what are you? I said, I usually get under the covers at home. Yes. And I said, that's where I do my work, okay. which was true. Now, there was a special concert at the Oakland Auditorium. I think your son, you were a teenager. Yes. Uh, where 24 pianos? 24 pianos. That was the second one. The second? We had, yeah. Yes. You were the lead yeah. pianist. Mm -hmm. Was it classical? Yep. It was a good, it was a good show. And so I found out the way to make money is to be sure it include, include the little boys to come in with the little girls. Really? Or their parents. They loved it. They just, like this, they were eager. And that was the thing, that's what I was trying to tell the woman the other day. I said, you never smile. I said, but you've got to. I said, it'll go along with you. When she left here, she was just a giggle up the stream. So, you're saying the, the little boys uh, really responded. Oh, yes. They love it. The boys in particular will go with their father or their mother or somebody so they can cut off of the train. Is that right? Yeah. Oh. They, something that they can do. Mm -hmm. They love it. That's the thing. Get through them. Get through them. And, get them. and they will do it. Because he... Mm -hmm. That's all right. It's all right. Go right ahead. I don't think there's much more to say. Yes. Well, you had friends, uh, partners that played bridge with you, or? All the time. We always played bridge. Tell us about that. Well, they're up there now cooking. My pals. There? Yes. Uh -huh. Well, they say, you remember all our games we had? Sure. So up there now. Who were yes. some of the people that you played bridge with, or? Uh, well, let me see. What was who was the first person who came in today? Uh, Belda. 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 She's down there. Belda Berkeley. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes, we go together. I say I've got to go such and such a place. Can you go with me? Oh no, wait. Let me see if I can find it. Says we can go. Uh -huh. We have a ball. And you mentioned uh, Norma Tucker. Oh yes, Norma. Now, she was never the close person uh -huh. to some of the others, but she's a very fine woman. Yes. She very was the president of Merritt 
College. Oh, she was? Yes. And she's now the area director for oh, yes. the links. She got a little bit left, left before she goes out. I see. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and then you, you play bridge quite often? Oh, yeah, we play all the time. Oh. As often as we could. And it never interfered too much with what we wanted to do, but we had one another yeah. and just laughed. And, yeah. and they're up there now. They'll be cooking your dinner tomorrow. Yeah. Now, you told us about the cotillions. You used to have the young ladies uh, go through the cotillion uh, with the links? The links, no. We, what, what did we have? That, do you know about that? Cotillion, yes, which was one of the mother's ideas to have a cotillion as a fundraiser uh, so that they could acquire monies for something the, else to get us money to go on. Do other programs. I was able to get it. Like uh, Marcus Foster's uh, scholarships and, and the yes. like. We were able to do that, to get going. And so now it's a little bit, not too much, yes. that they can get going. And right now, and I hope that I will be seeing him shortly until I'm not to overdue. Yes. Take it slow. Yes. Well, I'm thinking that uh, you were given a tribute on your birthday, and some of the things that were said about you were so powerful. Were you at the birthday party, Dr. Yes. Uh, do you remember some of the things that happened? Yes, it was quite an accolade of uh, yes, right. a group of uh, almost all of the links were there, her chapter. And it was uh, uh, chaired by uh, by the present uh, president. Um, and um, let's see who else was there. Jackie Harrison was there playing the piano. She made a special Everybody special uh, song for Mother. Uh, yeah. It was um, it was a, a parody on uh, Satin Doll. And oh, it was yeah. just. Great, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. Norma Jean Tucker was there. Also, her her buddy from from Texas, uh, Barbara Lord Watkins, was there, and uh, all of our family that we could gather together was there. And uh, it was just a it was a quite an event, quite an event. Yeah, yeah. I understand you used to uh, share a lot. You had a sense of humor, and you helped people to enjoy themselves. Oh yes. Tell us about some of the things you did. Uh, this is with the... With the, uh, your friends. And, my friends. And the links. Uh, you had a lot of events at your home. Or we in, like to play cards. Yes. And out in the community. Yes. Yes. We like to play cards. Mm -hmm. And giggle. Yes, yes. We giggle a lot. And as I've told some of them since then, don't be afraid to laugh. I said, it'll take you a lot of places. They said, yeah. Never had done it before in their lives. Mm -hmm. yes. so. Now, Dr. Rickman, when your mother was young, uh, she had some kind of um, illness or early on? Yes, when she was quite young, she had typhoid fever and uh, scarlet fever, and um, she almost died. Is that what I had? Mm -hmm. Is that what I had? Yeah. Is that what I did when I took, went to God and said, so, yeah. don't take over any more from me? Her took mother, it off. Her mother had already lost one son. She did it uh, Took them off. She asked God to spare this child, and he did. Uh, when she was a uh, teenager, she worked at the places I've mentioned before. And, but she always played the piano and she taught Sunday school with the little boys that she Lovely. prefers to Lovely. her Sunday school kids that she taught. Sorry, I love little boys. Yeah. But you do a lot with them. Yes. And you have a son, which I think is remarkable. That's wonderful. Well, I do too. Yes. Yeah. And uh, he's a psychiatrist, I understand. Oh, yeah. Doctor, a yeah. uh, psychiatrist. Oh, yeah. yes. And I think you, some of the, once someone said that at your birthday party, you have given so much to others in sharing your wisdom, sense of humor, pleasing personality. I'm not sure that I know exactly what to give you. But 
whatever when they were trying to get ahead, to, to tell them how to get ahead, a little at a time. I said, the first thing you know, it can hold up to the time. The first thing you know, a lot of the time. Yeah. Yeah. And yet, be sure that you know what you're saying. And I have to, I was putting the five and dime. We had, we, everybody in there stole enough money that they can get enough for their lunch. And they'd put in the thing, and they'd go on around, we'd have our, they'd have theirs. But it was, it wasn't enough to make any difference. But we did eat, and then I never, never in this world, tried to pass. They knew I was black. That had to be known. That sounds remarkable, uh, Dr. Rickman. It was quite an issue. Um, she had one brother who passed, and he would always regretted it. In later years, yes. he wished that he had not never done so. He was yes. a railroad detective, and uh, he couldn't have gotten a job otherwise. But everybody, he's who, white, he's white. everybody else who passed white, in the family son. met with a family with Leo mediocre all. lives. Right. Those who yes. were who we believe we are, uh, African Americans. It all right. And Leo and I would go down to this little place there and see all the nice water that they were fixing. Well, now you can have that much, but not this much, because that's got to go so No. We, she's gone. So like, we get the one that we were supposed to have. just have a ball. And what was your brother's name? Was that Leo? Leo's father. Her nephew. Oh, your nephew. My nephew, yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He was a wonderful man. Uh -huh. And Carol. before he died, he says, the biggest mistake I ever made was to pass. Mm -hmm. Did he say why? Uh -huh. Well, we had the war. We had the war. And they said they should have heard him. Said the way he talked, you wouldn't believe it was your, your brother. One thing was so painful was that uh, he could come and visit the family in Olean, That's but we could. the family in Olean could not come visit him because they were giving him away as being African American. That was the only daughter. Because we were like salt and pepper. So where did he live? He lived in Hornell, New York. Hornell. Uh -huh. So, and his place, uh, there weren't any uh, black people there. I'm not aware. I'm not sure. Where is, uh, no, they didn't associate. married a woman and they had this, this they son associate. named Leo who she played with a lot. They were almost the same, same age. And she was referring to uh, to taking things from the creamery. They they would, cows would be milk and they would put the, the, the product of the cow, the milk and the certain places and they weren't supposed to touch the cream. That was supposed to be to go to market or used for the table. They would steal the cream, she and Leo. That's what she was referring to. Uh -huh. And that was in, where was that? In, in a? That was in Cornell, New York. In, in the uh, restaurant or? No, that was uh, something that they, they had their own cattle. And um, so they, they took the, as I say, the milk from that that they would use ordinarily either to sell or to use for their own table. They wanted the kids to keep their hands off of that. Of course, they, that's what they went for, mm -hmm. cream. So Mrs. Brickman, when you were playing the piano, did you use um, uh, music or did you improvise or did you do? Did you play with music? Uh -huh. With music or if I do it without, I didn't bother with it. It was, you know, easy for me. Yes. And so it was nice to do, uh -huh. and, but I, I would say this, I didn't have to pass. I they see. knew. Yes. Did you play for churches? Played for church, yeah. And, and what other places did you play? Well, they were all colored. Uh -huh. And right. you played for uh, clubs? Uh, I think some of them did, but I didn't bother. Uh -huh. 
Because I was busy time, I had to play bridge right. with my friends. So where did you play the piano other than, you played at the Oakland Auditorium? Yes, I played, I played in the church. church. Every place I went, I had to do a little playing. Yes. So it worked out all right. Yeah, and do you have uh, relatives, uh, Dr. Rickman, who play for uh, musicians? Yes, uh, um, a fellow by the name of uh, Bill Easley is uh, quite accomplished on all the reeds, and he plays with Marcellus and and uh, with Jimmy Smith, and he's, he's uh, every once in a while he come out comes out here, and we go to see his shows. It's mm -hmm. been a while since we've seen him, but we always get excited when we see him. Yes. And, and you have a, a, a niece, or Mrs. Rickman has a niece also, who's a musician? Or it's uh, Easley? Um. Well, Easley is the, oh, the, the, oh his mother um, passed on, she died about two years ago. Lillis Easley, she had her own band with her husband. Who's that? Lillis, Lillo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she had, they had their own band for a while. Mm -hmm. He played the drums, and he became, um, uh, Bob Beasley became quite important in the Musicians' Union mm -hmm. under, I've uh, forgotten the name of the, the, the man it, who was there. It was nice we were days. able to gather people together who had something in common, something to do. Yes. So. Right. Now, I understand that you paint also. You're a painter. Oh, yes. yes. I like to paint. Uh, what do you What do you do? What do you paint? They're home. Uh, I have some of them out. That one, I don't know what I did, but anyway, I like to paint. Uh, so we had quite a lot of that around the house. Yeah. So do you paint people or portraits? No, I like not especially that. I like to get something I like and get that together. How do you? What What do you like? I like, I'm not sure, it usually takes quite a while for one article. Yes. It takes time. Yes. So. When I talked with you initially, you mentioned throwing paint uh, on the wall or on the canvas. Oh, I have done that. You have done that? I have done it. Yeah. It wasn't the kind that I was crazy about, but I, mean, I tried to see what I could do with certain things. So is it a slow, you do it slowly, painting? Uh, some of it, yes, and some of it, no. But for the most part, it's, no, I've got a piece up there that hasn't been touched. So I'll go up there and start on that one. Oh, I see. So you work on a little bit at a time, mm -hmm. and then you... Yeah, don't rush it. Don't rush it. So, do you have paintings that take maybe two or three months or a whole year? Oh, yes. There's some of that takes quite a while. Yes. Oh. And what are your other hobbies do you have? Bridge. Bridge. Oh, it's a hobby. And my friends. Yes, yes. Yeah. So, uh, do you serve uh, tea uh, or champagne? or? I think we are today. Oh. Today. I yeah. think so today. Yes. Yeah. So let's have some today. Uh -huh. Who's going to have it? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're arguing. So, do you remember when you were growing up, uh, what motivated you to become a psychiatrist, Dr. Rickman? Yes. Uh, we lived in the, uh, in the office until I was about 14 years old, and it was a, uh, a place over at a grocery store. Oh, and so I had to be very quiet, and uh, I but the remember. advantage of my being there was that I got to see the patience of my father, who just idolized him. They would always tell me what a lucky boy I was to have such a wonderful father. And uh, to the day he died, his patients were very interested in him and trying to help him. Um, uh -huh. So. Uh, I became interested in psychiatry because it, I, I felt that uh, uh, I couldn't work as hard as he did. Mm -hmm. He was on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week, delivering babies and all of that. And I did that during my internship years, but I decided 
I couldn't do that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Too much work. Well, Mrs. Rickman, you have some photos that we would like uh, your son to tell us about. They have uh, you're in the photos, and then we have uh, several here. He's going to tell us about. Mm -hmm. okay, All right, very good. She'll tell you where to start. In the upper left hand corner, there's an old picture with mother sitting in the, the middle with a hat on, and uh, a number of other people there. Uh, one who's kind of leaning over the others is uh, Mrs. Winifred Young. Um, um, this is, uh, I forgot the names. The lady name. with the hat is Beth Wilson. Beth Wilson. Uh -huh. And then this is Elsie Rumford. Elsie Rumford. Uh -huh. And then coming down on the left is Barbara Wishaw. Wishaw Bryant, Bryant, the yes. dance instructor. And then on the far right is Annette Bruce. Bruce, Annette. right. Bruce. Right. And then the next photo. It's uh, Mrs. Uh, Driver's mother. Yes. Uh -huh. and my mother, and I don't know the other person. Yes, and that's at a restaurant in Berkeley. I believe so. Yes. Okay, the might have been a Bates, but uh, this is Berkeley's birthday. This is uh, Belda Berkeley's restaurant. restaurant yes. yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Uh, Casa de Eva. Right. Uh -huh. right. All right. And here are the bridge partners. There are two pictures of them. Mother on the left here, Mrs. Berkeley, yes. Earlene Perry, and Zenobia Payne. Uh -huh. And this one, we have Mrs. Berkeley. Mrs. Berkeley. And Zenobia Payne, and Earlene Perry, and Mother. Right. Those are her bridge partners. Those are her bridge partners. Yeah. yeah. And then we're going. This large uh, uh, portrait is of four paintings that Mother did. She did them on uh, small cards. She used to uh, make these cards and sell them. Thank you. Uh, for a buck a piece, I think it was. And um, so we had them blown up so you could see some of the details of it. I'm very fond of this, this particular grouping. And over here, this painting in the corner, you may not be able to see it so well. Another one of her paintings is blown up. Okay, you good. This is a picture of mother taking in uh, you know, I, I, maybe about 10 or 12 years ago at Mrs. Berkeley's house. And she was in all her, her finery there, and happy she could be. She probably just got through playing the piano and telling Mrs. Berkeley she got to use that piano more because the action was getting stiff. <laughs> Beautiful picture. We'd like to thank you, Mrs. Rickman, for sharing your life with us today. And we've been so honored to hear your son, Dr. Rickman, tell us about your life. Thank you very much for the history that you are helping us to preserve. Thank you also very much, because we need it. <laughs>